Welcome to the second video in the read option series. My name is Justin and today we're going to be talking about first level reads. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification if you want to learn how to run a successful football offense at any level. The most basic read option plays involve first level reads. Usually, the quarterback will read the end man on the line of scrimmage. This is usually a defensive end or an outside linebacker, otherwise known as the read man. The read man is often responsible for outside contain, meaning he is meant to stop the ball from getting outside of the box. So how do we make the correct read and know when to hand the ball off and when to keep it? Well, once the quarterback meshes with the running back on the handoff, he gets his eyes immediately to the read man. If the read man sits or widens out, then the quarterback will hand off the ball to the running back. If the read man crashes down with his hips turned in to tackle the running back, then the quarterback will keep the ball and run to the outside. The read option is a great way to get defenders to break contain, putting them in conflict and forcing them to play extra disciplined. In addition to this, a read option component can be attached to almost any run play, and in this video we're going to have a look at several diagrams and in-game examples of the most popular run plays with read options attached. Like I mentioned in the previous video, the key principle of the read option remains the same in all different run schemes. The aim is to block 5 defenders with 5 linemen and to read the 6th unblocked defender in the box. So, to sum up the read option with a single phrase, it would be block 5 and read 6. The read option is most commonly paired with an inside zone blocking scheme. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video on inside zone as part of a concept explanation series that I'm working on. But basically, on inside zone, all the linemen are blocking an area, or zone, in the same direction, and the ball is being run in between the offensive tackles, hence the term inside zone. So, if the offense is running inside zone right, then the O-line will be blocking to the right, and the running back would line up on the left. The read man is also on the left, so the read man is on the same side as the running back. Now, if the offense is running inside zone left, then the O-line will be blocking to the left, and the running back would line up on the right, which means the read man is also on the right. So the left or right direction call is mainly for the O-line to know which way they're blocking, but it also tells the quarterback and running back where they need to go based off that blocking scheme. One thing to remember is that the read man will always be on the same side as the running back pre-snap. So in this diagram, the five O-linemen are working to five defenders in the box, and the quarterback is reading the end man on the line of scrimmage, which is the sixth unblocked defender. The running back will press the center's block and either bang the ball straight ahead if a gap opens up or will cut it back to the same side he started on if the gap closes. The quarterback will run around the read man if he ends up keeping the ball. So this first example came in the 2016 week 8 game between the Seahawks and the Saints. The Seahawks are lined up in a 2x2 spread formation and are running inside zone right. The quarterback makes the read on the end, and as we can see, he sits outside and doesn't crash down to tackle the running back, which means that the quarterback hands off the football. The running back presses the center's block, and as the lane opens up, he bangs it straight through. The next example came in the 2014 Week 4 game between the Dolphins and the Raiders. The Dolphins are lined up in a 3x1 bunch spread formation and are running inside zone left, which means that the O-line are blocking to the left and the running back starts on the right. Once again, the quarterback makes the read on the defensive end and as we can see, he sits outside and doesn't crash down to tackle the running back, which means the quarterback hands off the football. The running back presses the center's block and as the lane opens up, he bangs it straight through. The next example came in the 2014 Week 1 game between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. The Jaguars are lined up in a 3x1 formation with the tight end lined up in the box on the single side. The Jaguars are running inside zone right, which means the O-line is blocking to the right and the running back lines up on the left. The read man is once again the end man on the line of scrimmage. As we can see, the read man sits and doesn't crash down to tackle the running back, which means that the quarterback hands off the football. The running back presses the center's block and then he cuts it back as the lane closes. So this next play came in the 2014 Week 3 game between the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos. The Seahawks are lined up in the 3x1 spread formation and are running inside zone right, which means that the O-line is blocking to the right and the running back lines up on the left. The read is once again the defensive end. The end sits with his hips pointing upfield and doesn't run to tackle the running back. So, the quarterback hands off the football. 
as we can see, there's no lane behind the center and the cutback lane is closed. So the running back is forced to bounce his run out the front. Now let's have a look at some examples where the quarterback keeps the football. This play came in the 2014 week one game between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. The Dolphins are running inside zone right, which means that the O-line are blocking to the right and the running back lines up on the left. Looking at the read man, we see that he's clearly crashing down to tackle the running back. We know this because we can see that his hips are turned inwards and pointed towards the running back instead of being pointed upfield towards the quarterback. So this tells the quarterback to pull the football and run to the vacated space outside. If you're playing quarterback, an important thing to note is that once you get the edge after pulling the ball on a read option, you need to turn up field and get north-south as quickly as you can, as this will help you get yards. A lot of quarterbacks tend to want to avoid contact, so they run towards the sideline to get away from defenders, instead of getting up field and getting yards. So a lot of times you see quarterbacks can end up running like 20 yards sideways to only go like two yards forwards. So just keep that in mind, you want to get north-south as soon as possible if you keep the ball on the read option. The next example came in the 2014 Week 6 game between the Dolphins and the Packers. The Dolphins are lined up in a 3x1 bunch spread formation and are running inside zone right. Looking at the read man, we can see that he crashes down to cover the running back, and this tells the quarterback to pull the ball. But you might say that, well, his hips aren't entirely pointed in towards the running back, and they're sort of pointed a little bit upfield, because he's shuffling in. So that would mean that he's covering the quarterback. But because he shuffles in so far from the edge, the read man is declaring that he's tackling the running back. And by doing so, he's vacating all that space to the outside. Or in other words, he's losing outside contain. Even if he wanted to defend the quarterback, the read man took himself completely out of position to do that by coming in so far into the box. We see something similar in this next example, which came in the 2016 Week 12 game between the Seahawks and the Buccaneers. The Seahawks are lined up in a 3x1 spread formation and are running inside zone left. Looking at the read man, we can see that his hips aren't pointed in towards the running back and are actually pointed upfield instead. We also see that he is shuffling in rather than running in towards the running back. This is called the squeeze and pop technique. This technique is meant to help the read man play both the running back and the quarterback. So what happens on this technique is that the read man squeezes in to make it look like he's defending the running back, but then he pops back out to tackle the quarterback. We used to run the read option a lot on my own team, and our defense would use this squeeze and pop technique to try and confuse the quarterback into making the wrong read. So normally, if the quarterback sees the read man move in towards the running back at all, he'll pull the ball. But if the read man is running the squeeze and pop technique, he'll shuffle in with his hips pointing upfield, and he won't actually move in that far from where he started, which means he'll be in position to just run out and tackle the quarterback most of the time. That's why, when making this first level read, it's important to look at where the hips of the defender are facing. If the defender's hips are pointing upfield, then the quarterback will hand it off to the running back. If the defender's hips are pointing inwards towards the running back, then the quarterback will keep the football. However, like we see in this example with the Seahawks, the defender's hips are pointing upfield, but the quarterback still keeps the football and wins the edge. This is because the read man squeezes in too far into the box, which gives Russell Wilson enough space to pull the ball and win the edge. The last example came in the 2016 Week 9 game between the Redskins and the Lions. The Redskins are lined up in a 3x1 spread formation and are running inside zone left. Looking at the read man, we can see that he has his hips clearly turned in towards the running back and he is crashing down hard to stop the run. This is an obvious read for the quarterback to pull the football. Another thing that's good about this example is we see how the quarterback starts the handoff with the ball on his back hip and rides through the entire length of the handoff instead of just sticking the ball in and out of the running back's stomach. This does two things. If we ride through the entirety of the handoff, it gives the quarterback extra time to make the right read, and it often convinces defenders that the running back is getting the football, making it easier for the quarterback to pull it and get to the outside. Moving on to our next run play, the read option can also be paired with outside zone. Outside zone involves all the linemen blocking an area or zone in the same direction, with the aim of getting the ball outside of the offensive tackle and onto the perimeter. Hence the term, outside zone. 
because we're getting it outside the tackle. So, if the offense is running outside zone right, the running back will start on the left. If the offense is running outside zone left, then the running back will start on the right. Which means that if we were either running inside zone right or outside zone right, the running back would still line up on the left. Or, if we were running inside zone left or outside zone left, the running back would line up on the right. This first example came in the 2014 Week 1 game between the Seahawks and the Packers. The Seahawks are lined up in a 3x1 formation with their tight end in the box and they are running outside zone right. The quarterback reads the end man on the line of scrimmage, who stays outside to defend the quarterback, which means the ball is handed off to the running back who's running the outside zone path. The Seahawks ran the exact same play later in this game. This time, however, the defense brings an extra defender down onto the end of the line of scrimmage. This means that the defense has what we would call double outside, meaning that there's two unblocked defenders on the end of the line of scrimmage, and one of them can tackle the running back, and the other can tackle the quarterback. So even if the read man crashes down to tackle the running back, and the quarterback keeps the ball, there's still an unblocked defender there to tackle him. If you're a quarterback and you see the defense bring a double outside look before the snap, then you know to hand off the ball in that situation. Luckily, the offense is running outside zone, and double outside is not really too much of an issue as the run is going away from the pressure. The double outside look is more of an issue on plays like inside zone and power read. In fact, if you find yourself stuck in a standard inside zone call and the defense has double outside, you can check the play to an outside zone call, just like I do in this example here with my own team. This play came in our 2016 Week 1 game against the Sydney University Cubs. So, on this play, we've called inside zone right, but pre-snap, I noticed the safety cheating down to create a double outside look, so I immediately check the play to an outside zone right call. The reason I do this, instead of just flipping the inside zone play to the other side of the formation, is so that the running back stays in the same spot and I don't alert the defense that we know what's up. If I had flipped the inside zone run to the other side and made the running back move, the defense would most likely key on that and flip their formation as well to adjust. So, by keeping the running back on the same side, the defense will still bring their double outside and take themselves out of the play, and we get an easy pick up running the ball away from them. This next example came in the 2014 Week 5 game between the Seahawks and the Redskins. The Seahawks are lined up in the same 3x1 formation with their tight end on the line and are running outside zone left. Once again, we get our eyes to the read man. We see that he sits outside with his hips turned upfield and doesn't crash down, which means we hand this ball off to the running back. In this last example, the Seahawks are lined up in a 2x2 formation with their tight end on the line and they are running outside zone right. Looking at the read man, we can see that he has his hips clearly turned in towards the running back and is crashing down hard, which means that the quarterback should keep the football here. However, Russell Wilson hands off the ball to the running back. Now, if I had the end zone footage here, we might be able to see whether or not the end is lining up really far outside. If the end starts unusually far outside, then the quarterback is almost forced to hand off the ball because he probably won't get the edge if he keeps it. But if this end is in a standard 5 tech position here, I'm confident that based on our read, Wilson can pull the ball and win the edge with no issues because the end is crashing in so hard. The read man's hips are literally pointed towards the sideline, and I'd be okay with the quarterback keeping the football in this situation. Moving on to the next run play, the read option can also be paired with a power run scheme. The running back can either start on the same side or the opposite side of the play call. So my team preferred to run power with the running back on the play side. So if we call power right, the running back would also line up on the right. But a lot of college teams and NFL teams often run power with the running back starting on the opposite side of the play call. So if they call power right, the running back will start on the left and run the power from there. Just note that if you want to run power across the formation, you'll need to have a tight end on the play side to kick out the defensive end, especially if you're running power towards the three tech defender. Whereas, if you run power to the same side of the formation, you don't need a tight end in the box. So, this first example came in the 2016 Week 3 game between the Seahawks and 49ers. The 49ers are lined up in a 3x1 formation with their tight end in the box, and they are running power right across the formation, which means the read man is on the left. We see here that the read man clearly has his hips turned in towards the running back and is crashing down hard, which means that the quarterback pulls the ball and runs to the outside. So keep in mind, when you're running power across the formation, 
the read man is going to be on the side that the running back starts on. Okay, he's not going to be on the play side. If the running back was starting on the play side, the read man would also be on the same side. This next play came in the 2016 Week 9 game between the Seahawks and the Bills. The Bills are lined up in a 2x2 formation with their tight end in the box, and they are running power right across the formation, meaning that the read man is once again on the left and not on the play side. The read man crashes down hard to defend against the running back, which means the quarterback keeps the football and runs to the outside. The Bills ran the same play later in this game. This time, instead of crashing down to chase the running back, the read man sits outside to contain the quarterback. This means the quarterback hands off the ball to the running back. Looking at our next run play here, the read option can also be paired with a counter run play. So, if the offense is running counter right, then the running back will start on the left, and the read man will also be on the left. And if the offense is running counter left, the running back and the read man will both be on the right. So this first example came from my own club's men's team in the 2014 game against the UNSW Raiders. On this play, our offense is running counter left, and looking at the read man, we can see that he sits outside to defend the quarterback, which means that the ball is handed off to the running back on the counter. This next example came a few plays later, and our offense is once again running counter left, but this time, the defense has brought a double outside pressure to stop the read option. The double outside means that the quarterback is forced to hand off the football because there's nowhere for him to run if he keeps it. Luckily, the counter is being run away from the double outside, and similar to the outside zone example we looked at earlier, the defenders just take themselves out of the play and we're still able to run the ball away from them. The next example came in our men's team's 2014 game against the Central Coast Sharks. On this play, our offense is running counter right, and, looking at the read man, we can see that he sits outside to defend the quarterback, which means that the ball is handed off to the running back. So what happens when the quarterback keeps the football on a counter read? Well, let's have a look at this example from my own club's men's team, which is from their 2016 game against the Sydney University Lions. So, our offense is running counter left. This means that the read man is the end man on the line of scrimmage to the right because it's counter left, we're reading on the right. Looking at the read man post snap, you can see that he immediately crashes down with his hips turned in to tackle the running back. This means that the quarterback pulls the football and runs to the outside. The read option can also be paired with the buck sweep concept. Once again, the running back lines up on the opposite side of the play call. So, if the offense calls buck sweep right, the running back will line up on the left. The read will also be on the same side as the running back. This first example came in the 2014 Week 2 game between the Dolphins and the Bills. The Dolphins are lined up in a 2x2 spread formation and are running buck sweep right. Looking at the read man, we can see that he sits outside to defend the quarterback, which means that the quarterback hands the ball off to the running back who's running the buck sweep path. The next example came in the 2016 Week 10 game between the Seahawks and the Patriots. The Seahawks are lined up in a 3x1 bunch formation with the tight end in the box on the single side. The Seahawks are running box sweep to the left. Looking at the read man, we can see that he stays outside to defend the quarterback, which means that the ball is handed off to the running back on the box sweep path. Now the way that this gets blocked, it kind of looks like the defense has a double outside look post snap. So let's just say for the sake of argument that the defensive end is the read man instead of the linebacker who is the actual end man on the line of scrimmage and therefore the guy who the quarterback is actually reading. But let's just say it's the end in this case. We see that the end crashes down to chase the running back, which normally means that the quarterback keeps the ball. But in this case, even if the quarterback keeps it, he's going to get tackled by an unblocked defender, which is why he has to hand this ball off even if the defensive lineman was initially the read man. Moving on to our final run play for this video, the read option can also be run in the form of a speed option. This is the same run concept as outside zone, except that both the running back and the quarterback are running to the play side. The play side offensive tackle leaves the end man on the line of scrimmage unblocked and works to close the door on the closest linebacker who is scraping across to stop the run. The tackle closes the door in order to seal the edge for the quarterback and running back and create a lane for them to run to the outside. The quarterback attacks the outside hip of the read man. 
If the read man crashes down to tackle the quarterback, the quarterback will pitch the ball to the running back. If the read man widens out to cover the running back, the quarterback will keep the ball and turn upfield. So this first example came in our men's team's 2014 game against the Sydney University Lions. Our offense is running speed option right, and looking at the read man, we can see that he turns his hips inwards and crashes down to tackle the quarterback, which means that the quarterback pitches the ball to the running back. This play is also being run to the single side receiver, which means that there's a lot of open space for the running back to run and make a play. This next example came later in the same game. Our offense is once again lined up in a 3 by one spread formation and we're running speed option left towards the single side receiver and away from the trips formation. Once again, the quarterback makes the read on the end. As we can see, the end crashes down to tackle the quarterback, which means that the ball is pitched to the running back who has plenty of space to run and get easy yards. This last example came later in the same game. Our offense is running speed option left on the goal line and looking at the read man, we can see that he widens out to defend the running back, which means that the quarterback keeps the ball and turns up field. Now that we've come to the end of our in-game examples, I'll just leave you with a few important rules to remember when running the read option. So, number one, the read man is always the end man on the line of scrimmage. Whether it's a defensive end or an outside linebacker, it doesn't matter. Whoever the most outside defender is on the line of scrimmage, that's who the quarterback is reading. Number two, the read man is always going to be on the same side as the running back, unless the run play is inverted. And number three, if the defense shows a double outside look, the quarterback has to hand off the football every time. And also, just remember, if you get stuck in an inside zone call when the defense is bringing a double outside look to the same side the read man is on, then go ahead and audible the play to an outside zone run away from the pressure. It's a quick, simple audible for both the quarterback and the offense, and at the very least, it gets you out of an unsound situation without visibly alerting the defense. So that's all for today's video on first level reads. In the next video in this read option series, we'll be taking a look at second level reads, discussing the rules around how they work, and how to make the right read on a variety of different run-pass option combinations. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, be sure to leave a like. And if you have any questions or would like to add to the discussion, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching.